Here we are now. I'm going to finally talk about my thoughts on the departure of Charles Mornay. That's definitely a lot of thoughts went to my head. I wouldn't necessarily say a lot of emotions came to my head, as more so I tend to think very analytically when it comes down to why a person has left or what have you. If someone's passed away, that's a different story. Then of course I get a little bit more emotional when something like that happens. But overall, when someone gets replaced or they're fired or something changes, I do tend to go a little bit more analytical. Maybe a little bit too far, but it's just who I am. So for today, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a timeline of how I felt about Charles leaving and what have you, and we get to the end of how I'm currently feeling about the departure and what I think Nintendo is planning to do was the voice of Mario. So as usual, let's dive right in. So initially, much like many people, the announcement of Charles Martinet leaving definitely shocked me initially. Though soon after I started going to the conspiracy theories, I started thinking about things that happened previously that ultimately led to the departure of Charles Martinet. And initially, I believed Nintendo went on fire trial because of spite. And you may be wondering, why would Nintendo fire Charles out of spite? Well, to give you guys a bit of a run through of why I felt Nintendo fired Charles out of spite, which to be clear, I no longer share that opinion anymore. And it goes back to the red carpet event of the Super Mario Bros. movie, and Charles Martinet was nowhere to be seen at that red carpet event at all. Instead, he was at some convention over in Florida. To which, fine whatever, Charles never had a big role in the Super Mario Bros. movie. He played two characters in the movie, so why would he partake in an event like that when he doesn't really have much of a significant role? To which of course is a fine point, but my counterpoint would be the Dragon Ball Super Superhero event where Charles Martinet did voice someone in that movie, and I believe the role was about 10 minutes long when it comes down to the screen time. I haven't watched the movie, so I'm not entirely sure on that, but Charles Martinet was front and center in the red carpet event for Dragon Ball Superhero. And I believe Nitel saw that, that he was at that red carpet event, and he chose not to partake in the Super Mario Bros. red carpet event, and they felt pretty spiteful, which is why I felt at the time. And to be perfectly clear, I still feel there's a little bit of groundness to my own theory of why Nitel would have fired him out of spite. But the main reason why I no longer believe that anymore is just based on how Charles acts in the public. To which, once again, to be fair, Charles has always been the optimistic guy. He never looks at things a glass half empty, he always looks at things a glass half full. And he's always been like this even after Nintendo let him go as the voice of Mario and giving him the Mario ambassador role. But regardless, just based on how he acts, he doesn't really seem to have any spitefulness or any animosity towards Nintendo, hence why I've given up on that theory. But anyways, let's actually talk about the Mario ambassador role. A pretty peculiar role. And I definitely still feel that way, even listening to what Charles had to say in the video with him and Miyamoto, which we'll talk more later on that. As Nitello mentions, the role that Charles now has as the Mario ambassador allows him to be in conventions and events, still being able to use the voice of Mario that he's created, and spread the joy of Mario throughout the world. And I'm assuming payments are something that Nitello does give to Charles. And quite honestly, even after listening to the video, I still don't really understand the meaning of the role of Mario Ambassador. And in some cases, depending on when that video was recorded with Charles and Miyamoto, I doubt he even understands what the role Mario Ambassador means as well. Because there was a convention that he was in, and he basically straight out said he does not know what Mario Ambassador means. And it's just weird that Nintendo is very fake on this terminology of what Mario Ambassador means, and they make a video to try to clear things up of what Mario Ambassador means, but they essentially just regurgitate what they said previously. Though, I will say at the very least, because I want to be fair to Nintendo, I do believe after the convention ended with Charles saying that he didn't know what Mario Ambassador meant, he came to the Nintendo headquarters, recorded with Miyamoto, and from recording he fully understand what the role of Mario Ambassador meant. Though hard to say. Though I'm looking at this trying to be fair to Nintendo. And I guess let's talk about that video with Charles and Miyamoto. And I think watching that video is part of the reason why i basically given up my thoughts on, oh, Nintendo fired Charles, they were spiteful against him because he didn't show up in the Mario event, but showed up in the Dragon Ball red carpet. Like I've been saying this whole time, even in the video, Charles was very cheerful in that video. He seemed to have no animosity towards Nintendo, and he still seemed to enjoy what he was doing, talking to the fans who were interested in why Charles had to leave. And even Miyamoto seemed to be happy to be around Charles' company. 
I don't know if they recorded separately or they were in some Zoom call or whatever. But you can tell Miyamoto loves Charles. He's excited for this new role that he has as Mario Ambassador. And there's definitely no animosity between Miyamoto and Charles. And of course, Miyamoto's just one person. But still, the point still stands. You definitely don't see much animosity. And I think at the end of the day, as long as Charles is happy, who am I to go on and complain and analyze the deeper meaning of things and think there's another reason to why someone got fired and what have you? I don't really need to think like that. I just need to accept the fact that this is happening and Charles still seems to be happy with whatever he's doing now as Mario Ambassador. And finally, let's talk about this one interview from Doug Bowser, which basically entails us of how they're treating the next voice of Mario going forward. To which basically in this interview, someone asked Doug Bowser of whether or not we're going to hear who's voice in Mario and Luigi before the release of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And Doug Bowser's response was, you're not going to know at all. You have to play the game yourself and reach the credits to see who's voice in Mario going forward. And this is an interesting move and not a surprising move from Nintendo. I personally disagree with exactly what they're choosing to do with the new voice of Mario of not revealing his voice, but it's not out of line from Nintendo. I remember watching a video of Kid and Krista where they basically explained that Nintendo doesn't like when people associate their characters with an actor. They're definitely essentially the complete opposite of how a Japanese company treats a seiyuu actor and how they end up voicing a character. Nintendo doesn't want you associating an actor with a character. Definitely think this has a lot of merit when you hear Doug Bowser say, oh, you're not going to be knowing who's voicing Mario until you reach the credits of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Because of course they have to credit who's voicing Mario, or else there's going to be lawsuits up their ass. But they don't need to be upfront of telling you who's voicing Mario going forward. And at the end of the day, they don't want you associating Mario with an actor anymore. They want you to be associating Mario with Nintendo. I personally disagree with the move, but at the same time, listening to people like Ken and Krista, I understand why this move was made. But at the end of the day, I still feel happy for Charles. I'm happy for him that he's able to move on from the voice of Mario and assume this role of Mario Ambassador and still find enjoyment in his life. He can definitely turn a frown upside down. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble and talk about my thoughts and feelings on Charles Martinet and the voice of Mario and what I think Nintendo's move is with Mario. And if you enjoyed this video, you should check out these videos here as well. I think you'll enjoy them and get a good kick out of those. See you guys on the next one. Take care.